I was contacted by Victor from Constellations 88 and Victor said, do you want to ch check out my new platinum, uh, sorry, my new plasma? I said, sure, he said, sure. Boom, boom, there we go, out to the mailbox, pen. Okay, so today we're going to have a look at the Constellations 88 plasma. I'll stop there. Um, I'm going to show you the past the pen, I'll do a writing sample, I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's uncap the pleasure. Okay, so here we go with the Constellations 88 Plasma Pen. Uh, as you can see, that's a clear pen, so it's kind of cool. It comes with a converter, but I had eyedropper it, which worked very well. Uh, this pen is made of precious resin. There is an actual silver coin embedded in the cap uh, with the Constellations 88 logo. Uh, it's a cartridge converter system, but as I said, can be eyedroppered. It's made of precious resin, according to the website. Uh, it is a Bach number 6 nib in medium or fine. You get free worldwide shipping and it costs $140. Okay, in the box is this little pouch, um, which I am pretty sure is vegan friendly because this does not seem to be real leather, uh, which is neat because I know that some of my friends are vegan, so that's nice. You get a case that you can also use and don't have to throw out or anything. And then we have the pen. Now, before we do anything, let me just show you this pen right next to a Lamy Safari. And what you will see is that it is not so long, but it does have some decent girth. <sighs> okay, let's look at the parts of the pen. On top, that's that silver coin. It says uh, Constellations. Uh, 88, I wanted to say. Oh, it's round, now I have to figure out where it starts. Uh, okay, Con Constellations 88. Yes, there we go, with the star and the logo, which is also on the pen pouch, as well as on the box, right? Okay, then we have this clip, uh, which is a nice, simple shape. Clip is pretty springy. I really crank that there, um, but stays in place, works well. Cap is completely clear, which I kind of like. The, of course, the downside is you will see the ink that splatters in it, but yeah, you can't have your uh, cake and eat it too, can't have your free lunch and eat it too, what's the expression? Um, because of course, if it would not be clear, then I would say it's not clear and I can't see the nib. Right? Well, I can see the nib, but I can also see the ink. So there's no winning, it's just the way it is. Kind of cool, you have the section, you can see that there, the pen the cap and the barrel are pretty flush. I feel a tiny difference, but it's really quite nice, quite flush, which is kind of cool. You have the barrel, tapers down and ends right down there. Okay. Um, here we have the, the pen, the section, completely clear, so you can sort of, sort of see the nib in there. It's mainly a blob of ink there, as well as the section, uh, sorry, the feed and the feed I'm pretty sure that is plastic and not ebonite um, but nice Bok, it's a simple Bok nib with the Bok logo it doesn't have a Constellations 88 logo on it but that's just the way it is and it is a reasonably sized pen so you have a bit of a step down here a little metal ring threads section tapers down and has this lip here um, it's not a massive pen and it also doesn't really post, uh, so it's it's not enormous, but I find it comfortable enough to use unposted. Speaking of which, let's zoom out a tiny bit. And there we go. The Constellations 88, this is the, I thought it was the medium nib. Now I'm in doubt. And of course I can't find it. No. It is the fine or the medium nib. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry I'm not perfect, but I simply don't remember. And on that very topic, I don't remember the ink either. It is a sort of uh, uh, light blue ink, okay?
writes okay. It's not a, an ultra smooth writer. Uh, there is some feedback. It's not scratchy, but you definitely don't have a, a glassy smooth writing experience. You see there are some skips, uh, maybe a tiny bit on the dry side, uh, this nib. Yeah. As always, very careful. Line variation, there actually is some. But, as always, be very careful because it's not a flex nib, it's not advertised as being a flex nib. Reverse writing gets a bit scratchy, but it is possible and the pen doesn't seem to give up very quickly, so you can get away with this and turn the nib into a grade finer by flipping it upside down. Okay, there you have it. Let's have a look at what I like about it and what I don't like about this pen. Okay, what do I think of this Constellations 88 pen? I actually put it in the pen pouch so that I could show you. I like the idea that you get a pen pouch with the pen. My only issue is um, there is a bit of a discrepancy between the uh, size of the pen and the size of the pouch. So the pen, uh, it's, a, it's a loose fit, let's put it that way. Um, now, the nice thing is that there's ample space in this, this pouch. You can actually put a second pen in there as well. There's no divider, so they will touch. If that freaks you out, then don't do it. But in theory, you could do this. Another interesting thing is that this... Uh, some sort of ferromagnetic uh, metal was used for the, for the clip. Um, because now the pen doesn't actually slide in. Because the magnet in the pouch is actually holding the pen in place. Because I can push it all the way down in there. That can function as sort of a safety mechanism, because my pen is not falling out now, even though I have this at pretty much 90 degree angle, uh, because of that magnet. So, not terrible, uh, but I'm not sure if that was intentionally designed that way, but I did find it interesting. My biggest issue though is that it's a relatively small pen in a relatively spacious pouch, so once it's in, you have to kind of dig in there to get your pen out. But having said that, it's a free pouch. So that's always nice. Right? And you can always put a larger pen in, because if you happen to have a larger pen, as I do, this custom Micata pen by Pen Prique or Joseph on Instagram, this fits in, and as you can see, that comes all the way up there, and this is very easy to take out. So you can always put other pens in this, if you have bigger pens that fit. Okay. What do I like about this pen, or what do I not like about this pen? Well, there's quite a couple of things to like. I mean, it's a nice pen, it's very clear. The polishing work is very good, because you can see all the parts very clearly. It's not very cloudy, it's, it's really nicely done, and I think that's really quite nice. There's also a couple of finishes available, which is nice if you don't like this clear version. There are other models in this, or other finishes in this model, I should say, so that's nice. You have the little silver coin. It doesn't do, do a whole lot for me, but it's interesting that it's actual silver and that it's embedded in your pen, so that, that may add a little bit of value. Uh, not that the silver would add a whole lot, but you know what I mean. It, it, there is a little bit of precious metal in there, which I don't think is bad. Uh, I like a bock nib. It's, it's simple. Uh, a bock nib, you kind of know what you get. Sometimes they're a little dry, but they are typically well-tuned. They typically do what they're supposed to do. And yes, it's not rebranded, but it's number six in box, so that also means that you can probably put on a whole bunch of other nibs. Um, many of the uh, uh, Visconti nibs are bock nibs, so in principle you could put on a Visconti nib, for example, and in theory, because I have not tested this, I'm just telling you this, okay? So if you have another bock nib, it would fit. Probably, right? And that's kind of nice. The final thing, uh, no, actually not the final thing, there's two more things I wanted to say. One is you can eyedropper it, uh, even though it comes with it with a converter, so that's always nice. If you need that big ink capacity, that is a big ink capacity, because that's a pretty solid long barrel. Um, so you have that option if you want to. Uh, and the final thing that I kind of like is, I don't think the price is that bad. Given that these pens are handmade, it's 140 US. A lot of pens, acrylic pens with steel nibs these days, I see $150, $160. So $140, including free worldwide shipping, and with a little vegan-friendly pouch, I really don't think that is that terrible. So in that regard, pretty cool. What do I not like about this pen? Well, there isn't a whole lot. 
I would like it if this pen posted, and it's not because it's such a small pen. I mean, here you have a Visconti Opera Elements. As you can see, this pen is, relatively speaking, they're pretty much the same size. But for some reason, I feel like I want to post this pen. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because it feels a little stocky because it's quite fat and not super long. I would like to kind of post it up to this level and then it would be really cool. But you cannot post it. The pen will not post. I mean, you can sort of do this, but it's, it's clearly not very secure and the cap will easily fall off. That's uh, one thing. A second thing I wanted to say is there are a couple of turns involved in capping and uncapping the pen. So count with me, that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and a little under a quarter. So if you want to uncap this quickly to write something, that's it, right? So quite a couple of turns. Now the advantage of that is this will not easily uncap accidentally in a pen pouch, in a backpack, in a pocket, wherever you may choose to carry this pen. That's the plus, but for me, I would prefer it if it had uh, slightly fewer turns. Final thing I would say is maybe it is a little chunky. Now, I know that some people really like this design, and that's fantastic. Uh, there's a pen for everyone out there. But because it is, for some reason, I think it's not even, as I said, not even so much that it's very short, it's just a bit fat. And I think the proportion of that makes it seem a bit uh, I don't really want to say clunky, but as I said, a bit chunky. It's a bit bit big and bulky. So maybe if we could do something like this, but longer, I think that would be a very cool uh, pen. I'm looking at this, um, my car type pen again. It doesn't need to be quite that big, because that's, I think, a bit big for some people. Uh, but maybe something like this would be a nice length for this pen to explore a bit. Maybe that's a possibility. The bottom line, well, for 140 bucks, you get a very nicely polished clear pen, eyedropper converter, uh, I would call that eyedropperable. You can use that as an eyedropper. You have a cartridge converter, the converter comes with the pen, you get the pen pouch. I think it's a pretty complete package. And it writes, which is something that definitely helps. And some of the pens I've used over the years did not write out of the box. So, in that regard, it's cool, simple, nothing wrong with that. That's exactly as advertised what it's supposed to do. So, Victor, thank you for sending me this pen. I appreciate it. Guys, I hope this was useful. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.